वेलकम यूएस टू ई पाठशाला पीजी कोर्स फॉर आर्किटेक्चर स्टूडेंट्स एंड दिस डे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स इन जीआईएस एस ऑफ नाउ यू हैव अंडरस्टूड एंड यू हैव सीन व्हाट आर द वेरियस इनपुट्स व्हिच आर टेकन इनटू जीआईएस हाउ डू यू स्टोर द डेटा हाउ डू यू मैनिपुलेट द डेटा एंड हाउ विल यू आउटपुट द डेटा इन फैक्ट वी हैव सीन द फर्स्ट एंड द लास्ट पार्ट इन डिटेल द इनपुटिंग ऑफ डेटा as far as how to depict the data at the end of the project well so today we'll be discussing about how you are supposed to store the data otherwise known as gis data structures before going into that let us just recapture what we have discussed and what you have seen in say data input how you have input the data how you got the data into the system and things like that a little brief introduction about that as you know that in case of any kind of gis software irrespective of the type of software or whoever is going to develop a software we need four different modules as i already told you the first module is the data input and verification otherwise known as data capture module data storage retrieval and management data manipulation analysis and modeling and finally data output or what are we called as product generation and finally the presentation of the data so let us see a little more details about how you input the data as you know that input of satellite data input of various other forms of data through digitizer boards or through scanning or any other means even a simple excel sheet or a spreadsheet or the some of the methods of inputting data into a gis environment so because in the advantage of inputting into gis will help us to modify the data retrieve the data you can even make any changes to the data or correct the data that's what is the biggest advantage as you have seen all these days well finally we can also have the kind of labeling of the data so you can label the data in such a way that it will be very legible for anybody to understand but most of the time you know that data can be understood without any difficulty by looking at that in the form of which is given in the form of a map however labeling will give you much more many more details than what you expected to that's what is about your inputting of data data which are supposed to be input or which can be rather in, input into gis environment is that satellite data aerial photo data both of them are were different in the earlier days now it has changed satellite data invariably is in the form of your soft copy whereas aerial photo data were all in the form of photographs taken from a low altitude and then uh, copied or printed uh, as a hard copy for in a hard copy format and then handed over to the user they in turn used to prepare maps from that and then finally it was to go as an input into gis environment similarly satellite data always uh, you get or receive the data only in the form of a soft copy however depending upon the requirement people use the data as a hard copy prepare the map input as you do in the case of your aerial photograph but satellite data as it is is available only in the form of say your digital data or the soft copy as the name numbers digital data in the soft copy format similar to your aerial photograph satellite data also can be printed and can also be used as an input after preparing the map or theme which was required whatever is the application and then input into gis data so either you can use the satellite data directly in gis environment or you can prepare a map and then input into a gis environment aerial photographs is the same case you can prepare you can directly take these aerial photographs as a digital format as of now because digital photogrammetry has improved a lot and photographs are also taken in uh, in the form of say digital numbers and that is directly input into or imported into your say gis environment so these are the two major things which are present as of now invariably we call them as satellite images satellite images or aerial photographs you cannot call satellite uh, uh, images as photographs because you don't photograph you only image the data well this points we have seen already well these are not the only inputs what we will be looking at we will also have images with from other form in other form rather namely save your topographic sheet or topographic map a topographic map as all of you know is prepared by survey of india that again is available in the form of say a soft copy and a hard copy 
Please bear in mind there is a major difference between raster image and raster data. Satellite data will be available as an image but still it is raster data. A topographic map or any other map which is prepared by various agencies which are going as an input into GIS environment need not necessarily be a digital data in the form of say you are an image. It's an image but it's not a raster data, it's a raster image. So that difference you have to bear in mind. That team could be a geological map, a soil map or it could also be any other map which is prepared for a specific purpose and input into your GIS environment. Well, we also have a set of data namely your data which will come in the form of say subcopy namely data which is obtained from say a CAD drawing, a microstation drawing, whatever form is that. Again that is digital in nature, that is again in, in some form, let us see the, those details a, a little later. Now coming back to this one, data can also be input from in, in the form of say a simple excel sheet, a spreadsheet rather, need not necessarily be excel sheet, could also be a MDB file. Whatever is that, that data which is available in the S point data can also be input into GIS environment and later you can develop whatever is required from that. Many times surveyed data, data which is being surveyed at various places and that also can be brought in. That's what I just told you an example as your drawing data or that could be in the form of DWG format or a DXO format. All those things we will see a little later. Just get an idea what are the ways in which you can input the data. Satellite data, L photo data, topographic sheets that is topographic maps or topographic sheet data from that or maps from that or thematic maps prepared by various agencies, surveyed data or the observed data. Observed data is nothing but what our fleet we are doing is that taking a GPS to the field and collecting the point of interest. It could be a simple well data, it could be any specific building for our study where you don't require the data or the building to be represented as a polygon, just as a point data, representation. So you can represent these features in that form. So a kind of a collection of data pertaining to a specific location without mentioning whether it's going to be a line data or a polygon data, a point data can also be represented using an observation point. So that's what is your GPS data collection. Okay, this is the way in which you input various data into a GIS environment. So let us just continue with the various types of data, how it is entering into that. So this is the satellite data, which I've been telling you now, how the satellite data appears. On the left side, you can find the satellite data, which is a raster image. That's why we call it as data image. Now bear in mind, I was just telling you about your data and image, the difference between that. A raster image as such cannot be picked up or cannot be selected or it cannot be edited. Of course, I do agree that images can also be edited in a software meant for that, a Paint Shop Pro or your uh, any other Adobe Photoshop and things like that. That is editing of a raster image. Like you just simply take a photograph and then make changes to that. That's not the concern here. Here we are talking about an image which can neither be selected nor can be edited. So that's what is a raster image. Whereas a raster data is not like that. A raster data can be selected. Details about that particular aspect also can be stored and then as well as it can also be edited. So that's what the major advantage of a raster data. Well, a satellite data, though we call it as raster data, it appears, I told you, it is on the imaging aspect. That's the reason we call it as raster image. So don't get confused with a scanned image of a document or a map or a drawing with that of your satellite image. A satellite image is invariably a raster data in the form of a satellite image. As I was telling you about the thematic map, which are normally prepared from say aerial photographs or satellite data. Yes, this is an example of a slope map depicting various features at places along with your say some of the names are also given in the map and that is also immense use while you are preparing a map. It is an example of a slope map on a 150,000 scale. Topographic sheet. In detail we have seen those uh, how a topo sheet are all prepared and things like that. Now you can find that uh, it contains various details apart from your water bodies uh, and vegetation which is uh, normally shown uh, in uh, say your uh, yellowish color and then you have a settlement which is shown in red color and we have water bodies uh, which may be shallow or which may be deeper in nature or may with water throughout there all these things are all shown from a topographic map 
from this uh, we can extract more than one layer so that's what is a topographic sheet is a very very important uh, input FMB sketch this is what I was telling you about drawings which are available with the uh, say various agencies and then we collect the data and then we try to input this data of course there are two ways in which you can develop this data either simply keep this as a background and then take it into the GIS and this is a raster image when you just scan the data and the data will go as an image into a GIS environment where in which we try to digitize or trace all these features and get the output of course we can also build the data using your uh, say ladder data the ladder data is on the right side and this is what is the data which we can bring it into a JS environment as I was telling you about the last one is your observed points points which are obtained from the feed using a handheld GPS or any kind of GPS and you get the XY location it could be a latitude longitude or it could be easting or nothing whatever is that and the data is provided here and once I have these observed points which may be uh, as I told you excel sheet or a spreadsheet any spreadsheet that data also can be brought into JS environment as a point data by simple means where the simple methods will be there you can bring the data so this is about inputting the data in say GIS environment now finally very important thing we enter into the various types of data which is available in say GIS or data which is which input into uh, say GIS environment what are the major types normally we have two types of uh, data which is your vector data or raster data vector data specifically in gis we call it as shape data data which is in the form of a specific shape that's why it's called as a shape file it could be a point data it could be a line data or it could be an area data so this we have seen in detail many times we otherwise call them as features so all the data which is in the form of a vector data or a shape data are otherwise called as features it could be a point data a line data or a polygon data importantly note that a point data as i think you just uh, you can understand very simple method way rather it doesn't have any dimension it's a zero dimension object and very importantly it's a combination of two numbers namely x and y it represents well location as i was telling you crime scenes or a small city or it could be a building which can be represented using a point data line data single dimension a point neither has your length or area a line or a polyline consists though it is one dimensional it doesn't have area it has got only length and it's nothing but the shortest distance between two points of course this is a very simple thing everybody knows we have a beginning point and an ending point for a line and invariably this represents streams boundaries and roads or any kind of feature which are linear in nature of course the most important input is your polygon data it's a two-dimensional data which has got both length as well as area and what is that again please bear in mind whether it's going to be a point data or it's going to be a line data or a polygon data everything is consisting of only point data a point is a point unique value a line is a connecting between two points a polygon is a connecting a line between um, amongst various points you start with a particular point and you end with a, the same point once it is there it encloses a space so that we convert into a line into a polygon so that's what the uh, computer does nothing else is unique so everything and anything represented as a point or a line or a area it's all uh, consists of basic detail namely your point data so that will decide whether it's going to be point or line or area depending on how you incorporate the data what does the GIS software do it stores the data in this vector format and it is supposed to retrieve the data isn't it otherwise there's no point in storing the data as such so what it does is it stores the data and retrieves the data to retrieve the data and depict in the same form as it was in the initial stage or the, as it was uh, obtained so that is a difficult process so retrieval you need if you want to store at the same time retrieve the data you you have to for, follow a specific procedure a norm and that is what is your data structure once you follow that it will be very easy only storing is difficult but retrieval is easy because everything and everything in gis is represented or it is affected by what is called as your coordinate system especially the earth coordinate system where in which uh, we have the value of x and y in the form i told you about uh, 
both your latitude longitude or could be easting and northing whichever form so it will have a coordinate and that is what is actually we do it in simple graphical method we just try you know all of you know you must have done in your school days a simple graph but the xy as the origin point and probably the top right we have the zeros from 100 100 from 00 to 100 100 will be the, the top right so anywhere you prick between 0, 0, 0 and 100, 100, you will have a value of x and y. So that's what is all about your representation. In a GUI, it, it is represented. So we know that uh, a polygon uh, has got both area as well as length. It is in the form of a perimeter circumference. I think this details we have just in, seen in cartography lecture even. Now you see this. If you just look at this, you'll have how uh, a building which has been taken as a photograph from the top uh, is represented or it is shown in the form of say your vector data as well as a raster data in fact uh, this is what i was telling you this is the left one what you see is a real world aspect it will be a photograph or uh, it could be an image from satellite and uh, this one actually consists of a building here and that building may have to be captured and you also have a road by the side i want to capture this building as well as the road i can also have some points in the surrounding area this one you see how it is represented in the form of a vector data or a raster data you can see this vector data it exactly follows the line as you just see here so this line it just follows goes around like this this is a polygon and ends up here whereas this river or it could be a say a road have to be represented in this form but please bear in mind a road also is not a line data it is only for representation purpose road is also containing width it is also got length so it's a road is also a area data but still basically we call that road we represent the road as a line data so in the vector form you can see it is represented as it is totally but in raster form you can see how it is distorted but by increasing the size in the sense of what we normally do so making it larger and larger the scale this resolution it becomes much more smoother so that's why you, you must have seen in many of the uh, say your uh, photographic techniques uh, or mobiles uh, they say mp million pixels isn't it 3 mp 5 mp so imagine so nothing go nothing will go wrong but still when you look at the raster data you should understand that the raster data will try to have number of cells so this is what we call it as a grid or a cells various cells in the form of a grid of course we will see the details a little later you can see how uh, the building is represented here of course as far as this is concerned because it follows a proper line and this is also there but once it just takes a turn so once it is taking an angle from away from the uh, uh, vertical or the horizontal you find that it gets distorted and you can see here how it so provided i increase in the sensor with resolution this is split into a uh, many more uh, cells obviously that particular thing will become much more smoother and this will become a, almost a straight line you can also see here in the case of your road here it is a simple straight line but here you see how it occupies there so depending upon the line width and the line in which it is captured you it will uh, it will be stored in the form of various cells so that is what is the major difference between your vector data and raster data. So please bear that in mind. There is a third form of uh, putting the data that is we call it as the surfaces. Expressing the surface in the form of say your, uh, say it could be a contour data, it could be a elevation model, digital elevation model. In that context we have a third type of structure which is also a part of say vector and say raster or raster many times uh, that is called as your triangulated irregular network structure a very very unique structure and a very important structure as the name indicates triangulated irregular network so it will have a n number of triangles the whole area will be divided into n number of triangles or irregularly spaced but you will not have any other shape other than triangles so triangulated irregular network of that triangles so if you just look at the picture this particular surface may have to be transferred transformed into or transferred into a sheet of paper you see here how it is done in the form of triangle you can see hundreds and thousands of triangles are there but none of them uh, uh, will be of similar size or shape it could be similar sometimes but may, mo most of them you find that uh, they are all of different sizes and shapes and then they are present at uh, different locations of course it all depends on various aspects that you will see depending upon the uh, object uh, the shape its size it is divided for a simple example you can see here this is a slightly elevated zone 
So in this context, you can just find that it is uh, relatively bigger because there's a uniformity of the object. So when you don't have that uniformity, it will be difficult to uh, represent the data. So here you can find little bends are there and this is how it goes. So every aspect of that, every aspect you find that this triangulated regular network will help us in depicting the surfacial features as it is. So we call it otherwise called as surfaces, contours and DEM etc. So that's a third type of GI structure. When you try to compare or try to understand how vector data and raster data are represented in the form of a graph, a graphical representation of say your raster data, vector data and the real world. And you find that various aspects, point data, for example, they have given it as hotels, how it is there. So this is a point data, as I was just already telling you, the x axis and the y axis, this will be 0, 0 and this will be say for example 100, 100. And anywhere you prick in between, it will have a value of x, y and a unique value will be there. Similarly, line data, as I was just telling you, you can see here from one point to another point. This is a node part and this is called as the arc part. So we find that uh, and once it takes a change in direction, it will become a vertex. So, and so on and so forth. We will see this details a little later. You have the same aspect which is shown here. Okay, then we have an important aspect namely your polygon, how a polygon is shown here and that polygon is represented very uniquely in the case of your say your uh, vector data. Though it appears of course it is not exact representation of this forest area just to give you an idea about this. But here when I want to use, uh, I was just showing you then, when I want to digitize this or when I want to bring it into GIS, I have the advantage of going along this line and make it as, a, as smooth as possible. But again, that depends on a very important thing, the scale factor that we will see later. Now here what happens is that we should make sure that the closer you prick, the better will be the uniformity and the smoother. Otherwise what will happen, it will become a coarse way of living. In fact, that's what is shown here, a coarse way of representing an object here. But it's not truly a vector data which can also be smoothened. Well, so then coming to your road network, as I just telling you some uh, as a simple uh, line and ski lift, uh, here you have the road network. Now you have here, so this is what actually happens. See, when the road network is shown here, it is raster data, it is all uh, some total of n number of area, it is kind of uh, occupying area, but here it is a straight plane. And again, as I was just telling you, roads are definitely not uh, lines as such, it's only a representation. So depending upon a type of uh, study, when I am going to study or work on the network of road in the form with respect to civil engineers per, uh, perspective, what he does is he is more interested in understanding how the road is, what is the length of the road, what is the width of the road, what type of material which is present there, how, how much, what should be the carriageway and things like that. Whereas uh, when I want to work on something like resources movement, the movement of resources, then I don't bother about the raster data, I'll have to bother only about the vector data. So in that context, I, I'm not going to represent the road as a polygon, I'm going to represent the road only as a line data. So in, that's how we normally do that and we find that uh, here, this road you see how it is going. So this is the representation of the line data, so that's how you show them. Well, I was also talking to you about surfaces. Surfaces here, again, how an area is shown here, what exactly you have in the form of a, say, a surface, which is a very important aspect in GIS is that representing a surface. If I want to show the third dimension aspect of a land surface, I'll have to use elevation, isn't it? X and Y, I have the X and Y is nothing but your two dimensional. When I want to have the Z direction, the third dimension, then I'll have to have method of representing the third dimension in two dimension, namely surfaces. So all the aspects uh, like contours, contour lines which are shown in any kind of map, for example, a topographic map is nothing but uh, a line uh, depicting a specific elevation in that given area that is shown as a two dimension. So when I can translate the contour data into some form, say point data in GIS, I will have the advantage of creating a third dimension as it is. That's what is called as a digital elevation model or a DEM we call it as. So developing surfaces or you want to represent as it is, you can represent the third dimension as a two dimensional lines, namely the contour data. So this is what you can see here 
and of course uh, in raster it may appear li like a, a wholesome somewhat similar to your polygon but it is only in third dimension in this context every cell here will be given a value of uh, not only the xi and its content and the data will also be con containing something like say your values pertaining to that particular cell namely your z value so obviously when i have the z value i'll have the advantage of uh, enhancing it into a third dimension so here you see here how you have the surface elevation and this is what is the contour obviously you know all of you a contour is nothing but a line showing points of equal value that need not necessarily be elevation that also could be something like say uh, pertaining to water level data or it could be pollution uh, data so where in which we try to say that any ppm value it could be your carbon or whatever it is the carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide whatever you are trying to measure that can be shown as a contour data so contours are nothing but lines which is representing a same value and obviously contours can never intersect with each other so that's the big advantage of course you find in raster data you may be surprised how it is not there but that we will see in the form of your say topological model and the other details now coming back to the introduction to your say vector data so vector data how it appears and what exactly is the content of your vector data as i was just telling you each and every object on the Earth's surface is composed by a series of xy coordinate pair it could be a pair or it could be pairs of data so for example if it is settlement it is a one single data a pair of xy data if it is going to be a river or a line, it may have a beginning. So here this will be the beginning of the line and this will be the end of this line. Of course, there will be slight variation here. And whenever you have a, an intersection of two lines, it has to be, say, something like a node. Otherwise, it cannot have that. So a node will be at the end of the data, at the beginning of the data and also at the end of the line. And this is otherwise called as an arc. It normally represented as telling you the river data and any other road data. All this thing can also be there. So wherever you have a change in direction, a vertex is vertex in singular, vertices in plural is introduced. Of course, obviously, when I have the polygon, the polygons will be having something like this. So this is what is indicating one area covering this one. And this is the another polygon covering another area, so on and so forth. Invariably, this should be for your say a land use map or it could be an administrative map or whatever map you would wish to do that so that can be provided and that can be given here so that's what is the normally called as your polygon data it's nothing but closed set of lines so that's what is the best part of your gis so when it's the vector data again there are only three basic features namely the point data line data and the area data what is a vector model so you should know what a vector model is all about so let us see what a vector model is so basically, when we're, they were trying to describe the data or show the data as in an explicit uh, method or a form, and that uh, they found that if you want to represent the data in an explicit form, you can do it using what is called as your vector. So that's a major advantage you have in using the vector data. And uh, it also appears, so what advantage of again vector data is that you can represent the aspect or what you see on the surface uh, as a uh, as on a sheet of paper as a map so that is also not losing the dimensionality so that's what are the biggest advantage we also get the precise positioning of that particular object any kind of an object we want to do that we can get a precise positioning of that object using vector data of course most important aspect is that your analysis of your data any kind of quantitative analysis is possible using vector data so with this uh, we'll close uh, this episode on your vector data and in general the, the uh, structures of or the data structures in GIS. Thank you.